as you can see from the title, I'm going to be sharing some tips with you today. I'm also going to be preaching a little bit as an old mom, as a mother of four, who've also raised her nieces and nephews using the same tenets that my mom and my grandmother have imparted to me. Now, um, as you guys know who follow me on Instagram, I've had a lot of um, mummies who ask me, you know, how do I get my kids to eat all the crazy things I cook in and then I share in my Insta stories. Yeah, so a lot of my cooking happens in my Insta stories if you have missed the news. So I, I could be cooking Italian one day and the next night it could be Lebanese and the day after it's Korean and the night after that it could be French. So literally we cook everything in this household and my kids eat all of this. So what is the secret to that? So let me tell you though, um, I come from a culture that eats everything. Literally, <laughs> I mean, the kind of culture that has the smelliest fruit in the world as the king of fruits, which is called durian, and the culture where um, chicken legs, chicken feet is considered a delicacy. I don't really like them, I don't want to eat them because for me there's no point, there's no meat in there. If I was going to eat something, I want to have meat in it, I don't want it to have bones. But you do have them as broth and that's quite nice. So I'm from Singapore, if you've missed the news too, where our national passion, our national sport is actually eating. <laughs> Um, so we gather um, our, our, you know, celebrations for um, if there's anything, even a funeral, uh, a baby's um, arrival, or somebody's coming up from the hospital, um, a divorce, a wedding, everything is centered around food. So that's the first rule really, you need to love food, you need to be able to enjoy the different food that you see in the supermarkets. Now, a lot of the times, a lot of parents ask me like, oh, how do you get your kids to eat everything? Or oh, I want them to learn to eat, you know, this particular dish. And I'm going to tell you this. If you yourself don't eat those food, how can you expect your child to eat them, right? It's like saying, oh, um, you're telling your child, I want you to be very good readers, go read your books. But if your children has never seen you read a book or pick up book or maybe even intelligent magazine you know not just your fluff like hello mag or something but like natural geographic or you know or that's kind of science magazine please don't expect your kids to do what you tell them to do you got to show it you got to direct them you got to be the good example so in my household my husband and i we eat everything him being danish means also that he eats a lot of you know european scandinavian stuff and me coming from a mixed culture uh, in Southeast Asia I mean I eat uh, Chinese food, Indian food, Indonesian food, Malaysian food, Thai food, Filipina food. And then of course living all over the world meant that we were very exposed to different food. So my first tip is if you're a very young mother, okay, first of all, I know you might be too late for some of you, but listen anyway, when you're breastfeeding, eat everything. Because my experience is that when I was breastfeeding, I noticed that the food kind of comes out into your milk. Now, do you know why I can tell this? Um, one time my sister decided she was about 16 at that time, my younger sister, and I was, you know, I just had my first baby, this is 18 years ago. She said, I'm going to cook you um, some Chinese vegetables, and she put so much garlic, like literally she covered the dish in so much garlic, I ate them, you know, to be polite with her. And then my, you know, my, uh, my, um, she was about like a couple of months old. She came near my boob and she just went. And I thought, okay, she can smell the garlic. She can taste the garlic. So obviously. And then one time I had really spicy curry. My baby, um, you know, had milk. And of course, for about two days or something like that, her tummy was a bit bloated and she kept farting a lot. And I'm thinking, hmm, the curry must have gone through into the milk. So um, because of that. I believe that whatever you eat kind of goes into your milk so your baby kind of get used to it. But at the same time, when you start weaning them, don't be afraid to feed them as much, you know, range of food. And I know, I living in the UK, I know there's a lot of English moms. You are so scared to feed your children a lot of crazy food. Don't buy 
just make your own it's so easy to make baby food by yourself you know you can mash everything that you can imagine and just start feeding them one of the first things i uh, gave my children when they were very young is rice porridge you know i kind of pound the rice a little bit so it gets into really small little pieces a really small um they're called broken rice in our culture put them into the pot lots of water i put Fish, I put lots of fresh fish in there so it becomes flaky. Um, I cut up really small um, broccoli or you know and then you chop up or you smash some carrots and you put in there you just put and then my god it tastes really really nice you know don't, no salt nothing um, you know I, they don't need to have salt or sugar flavoring before the age of one okay so try and cook your own food make it tasty make it vibrant second thing is um a lot of parents ask me like how do you get your kids to eat vegetables okay my trick is to hide them in my food for example this is the easiest thing you cook spaghetti bolognese how about grating carrots and zucchini into your sauce if you've never thought of that, try it because it works. My son, as usual, you know, when he got a bit older, you know, nursery, all the kids like, hey, we don't like vegetables. He also thinks I don't like vegetables too. So that's how I hide them into the food. And it's, uh, studies have shown that when you eat something over about seven to eight times, your tongue gets used to it. So try using that. Now, coming back to that point. In our household, my children, I'm a very, very strict mom, like I said, they have to eat what I cook. There is no, nothing in our house like, oh, I want to eat this and I cook something else for another child and another one for that. No. Be the parent and say no to your children. Just say, you're going to eat what I cook, otherwise you can go to bed hungry. That's in my household. Now, we also have this rule in the house where... If I cook something new, or for example, Brussels sprouts, right? Uh, you know, like, oh, what's these vegetables? You know, you make it quite interesting for like Christmas, for example. I tell them you need to eat something three times. And after three times of eating it, and I'll try to cook it different ways, you know, different, different recipes. If you really don't like it, then you have a choice to go now. Okay, I'm going to back away. And we're going to try again, you know, a couple of months from now or a year from now, they're going to try it again. But they're not allowed to say no until they try the whole plate, the whole mouthful of it. And then they can say, I really don't like it. So that's the rule in our house. Try it at least two times before you can say, I don't like it. Second, so, you know, going back to the influence thing. So my husband never really liked raw tomatoes or tomatoes unless it's like a sauce. He's convinced himself it makes him sick. And I, who is everything you can imagine, whatever you put in front of me, I'll eat them. So uh, my daughter became convinced that she's also not into uh, tomatoes when she was younger, my eldest, she's age 17 now. She's like, oh, daddy doesn't eat tomatoes, so I'm going to be like, daddy, you see how much influence you have over your children. So I was like, no problem, it's fine, try it. So I gave her, you know, pastas and things like that. As she got older... I used to make um, grilled tomatoes with lots of balsamic vinegar and uh, balsamic uh, crema and um, olive oil with a little bit of pepper and you know little spices in there and I'll bake it in the oven and you get this caramel, caramelized, uh, caramelized tomatoes and for me it tastes yummy. So after a while she got curious, she goes, oh mommy that looks good, I said yeah you want to try it? And she's like, mmm, she's like wow this tastes yummy and like you see what you've been missing for years because you convinced yourself that you don't like it. So now, as a 17-year-old, again, she's like her mom, she eats everything, she does not like not things, she likes everything. And second thing is also, if you are scared to try new recipes, which I can imagine, not a lot of people like trying out new recipes, don't be scared. You know, one of the things I teach my kids, even young now, my 11-year-old knows how to cook simple dishes by herself, like I said, is to empower your children to learn to cook. Go to the supermarkets, uh, get them to... Choose your own vegetable. Again, my son, who's seven, convinces himself he doesn't like vegetables, really. I take him with me to the supermarkets and I go, what? You choose. You tell me which vegetables you like, which vegetable you want to try, and we'll cook them together. We'll, we'll, you can, sh we can watch me. I'll put a little stool for him. He can watch me and he can help me chop up some, you know, onions or whatever, garlic with it. And I teach him how to press. So I get him involved in the cooking process when it's something he doesn't really like. So he feels like, oh, I better, you know, the ego thing, I better, I better eat them now because I've had to prepare it. So, um, so yeah, as I was saying, so get them involved in the cooking process. So one of the things I teach my children is, for example, you know, in Asia, we love our noodles, right? We love our instant noodles. Now, 
Instant noodles doesn't have to be that instant and that boring. You know, in Asia, we tend to boil water on the pot and then you put your noodles in and then you put your flavorings and you take it out, right? Boring, pimp it up. So I tell my children, you know, once the water is boiling, put some meat in, you know, maybe chop up some carrots or chop up some uh, broccoli or put even some frozen um, spinach in there, you know, those frozen spinach cubes. And then, you know, we always have in the fridge frozen prawns and then you cut them up and then put them in there and then you put an egg and then you put your, your noodles in. Voila, within five minutes, my 11 year old can make herself a lunch, an extra lunch if she's really, really hungry after school without me having to worry that she's hungry and I can't be there to make her uh, an extra lunch. So again, you know, it's are simple things that you can pimp up your food. If you're going to buy ready-made sauces or whatever, don't just use it straight out of the bottle on its own. Try and put, play around, smell the spices. I cook with my nose. I don't cook with my tongue. I don't taste it. I smell it. I'm like, hmm, you know, this ragu maybe. Maybe you could do with a bit more um, oregano. Maybe you could do with a bit more thyme. And just, just play around. Don't be afraid of the kitchen because the more you be creative and, and play around with your food the more your children can join in with you and see what you're working on right and um, yeah so I wanted to show you for example um, I buy this Korean like uh, gyoza it's a dumpling and it contains a lot of um, glass noodle inside this is my children's snack when we are in between meals and um, another thing is also for example you know again we have uh, this um, woodland uh, champignon um, mushroom forest mushroom mix so again we don't just have your boring plain mushroom in the supermarket i'll go and find special you know european kind of like uh you know a girol or a sep or whatever they call all those different mushrooms so you get all the different flavors in your mouth in as a soup or as a stew beef um beef uh, bourguignon or uh, all these different different stuff right and also check this out we have crab claw where I come from there's a very special dish called um, chili crabs and uh, you can you can use a whole crab and uh, again you start them young don't wait until they're five six seven eight years old before you try out all this crazy looking food because by then it's a little bit harder for you to convince them it's still possible to make your kids try different food now one tip I read somewhere recently that I want to share with you why it's so important as a foreigner, I noticed that in England, for example, it is an island, right? The whole UK is an island, and yet there is a Darth of fish restaurant or good, good fish. Now, most of the world, we eat our fish with the bones, with the head, with the tail, and then you just scrape the, the, the flesh off. You just scrape the filet off on your plate and you eat it like that. Even when I just came back from the Netherlands, I went to a restaurant and I got the whole fish, the whole tail, the whole body. I was saying to my friend, this is so refreshing. In England, I only get a whole filet that's been battered and you don't see the fish, you don't see the real thing. Now, they were wondering, they did a study, I saw, I read in the newspaper, they did a study why um, there's a lot of hay fever cases in the UK compared to, let's say, in Scandinavia. Um, if, especially people living in the, like, a hotlands, like, not in the farmland. And it's because in Scandinavia, even though they're living near the farm, they eat a lot of fish. So it's been proven that having a lot of fish within your weaning years, your first year of your childhood, you actually build up immunity so you get less cases of hay fever. So if you're a very young mom with a young child, look at adding more fresh fish into your child's um, food, into your child's intake, into your weaning. Like I said, you know, maybe make stew or make noodle dishes because for babies it's so easy to eat, you know, egg noodles are so, so easy to cook and it's easy to make it lovely and yummy. Try adding more fish because that is very good for your brain growth. That is very good apparently now for 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 uh, for um, hay fever, and fish is really low in fat. Really good. I love fish. If you give me a fish and a meat, I will go for the fish dish anytime. In my freezer, we've always got a whole salmon. We've got always sea bass. Complete like you know, it's never. We don't really buy as much a fillet as maybe somebody else in an English home, we always go for the full hog, like the whole thing. <laughs> like you can see here, the crab with the whole claw, as you can see the whole flesh. I don't just buy the meat pre-packed into a bag. So yeah, really that's uh, the, 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 um, the tips I have for tips, the tips, the tips I have today. So if you've got any questions for me, ask me. I'm very happy to share with you. I love food. I love cooking. I love the pictures of food. I love, I love the smell of food. And um, I think that's helped my kids to be more um, explorative. 
So I hope you discover your love of food, your love of eating, your love of cooking in order to raise healthy family, healthy children. If you've got any questions, ask me. Uh, if you like this video, click like. And if you, ha if you haven't subscribed, I would love your subscription. Till the next video, bye.